Well, g'day everyone. Uh, we're in pre-show. Let me just put down a, a little pre-show <coughs> symbol down here. How are you, Aaron? How have you been? Hello, everybody. How is it going? I'm doing great. Uh, as usual, it's really hot here, so I'm trying to bear the, the heat. But other than that, I'm doing really good. And we are live. We missed last week. Uh, yeah, how did you survive the to... storm? You did okay? No, it's so funny because uh, a lot of times here in where we are in the west of Puerto Rico, so many times storms will come and just narrowly miss us. So we didn't even like we didn't even get like a drop, really. I mean, it, it was just like normal rains. So oh. it didn't even come. So but that's why we didn't do the show just in case, because if it would have came, then the electric would go out for sure. So, yep, we got by that one. Well, let's just see. I'm going to just switch over here and we can see who's in the chat because we're on pre-show. We're going to give this about Hi, Gerald. 10 minutes, everyone, uh, and then we'll um, start the uh, normal show. So uh, Oreo's here. We're saying hello earlier. Hey, Gerald's Oreo. here. Uh, Gerald's just come back from his uh, holiday Media. in St. Martin. Gary Stevens is here okay, as well. Um, JB Media, yep, is here. Donald's here as well. Hello from Texas. Torben, uh, hey, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, Dwayne's here as well. Altrix here. Mark Frost is also, uh, Forst, I think it is. Uh, Torben is here as well. So we've got a few Europeans uh, here today, Aaron, which is good. Robert, hello, hello. David's here would... as well. I've got two chats. Oh, have you? Sizzle Man, hey, buddy. Uh, John Burnett's here as well. Robert uh, is here as well, saying hello. So, uh Fire away any questions if you'd like, guys. So what have you been up to anyway, Aaron, over the last uh, couple of weeks? I've been kind of doing some a little bit of house cleaning here in the office, uh, or in the studio slash office. Uh, you won't notice anything from your side, but it's a little more cleaned up. Audio should be good. No more echo, I hope. If there is echo, it's completely Skype. Uh, took some of the blinders off of my lights and changed around some of the diffusers so I get a little more light, lowering the ISO settings of my camera. So I kind of did that. Uh, other than that, I was just doing uh, the normal personal stuff. Nothing too exciting that I can think about. Um, I did get a that you do see that over there. That is a uh, a beautiful photo album by one of the biggest uh, photo print companies in uh, Europe. They're called N Photo. I'm going to be doing a video on that bad boy because man, that's some of the best quality prints I've ever seen. And that's basically uh, not all of my photos, but a quite a large amount of my portfolio is in that, and uh, it's great for clients and to show clients that. So that's kind of new. That's amazing. Do you want to so give a? Do you want to bring it over and give us a sneak peek? Does it look beautiful, or you don't want to? No, I'm going to wait for. I okay. got to wait for the for the video because I just spent all this time trying to to film it and show it, and I go into more detail about it because it is absolutely stunning. I don't know how to show how good the quality is from. Yeah from the actual, you know, on YouTube, but it's just like absolutely superb. They do wall prints too, which I'll be getting into uh, maybe next month or something. Oh, but fantastic. other than that, uh, oh, I got this. Now this is from, uh, what's it? Lifeguard, Life Plus Guard. They do camera skins. I had some of those on my Sony a7 III. I did a really good uh, tutorial on how to apply those to your camera. They actually use that on their web page. So I got some new ones in. The cool thing about these, these are custom. So I actually designed these myself with my logo on it and all that. So uh, I'll be putting these on my camera, making a video about that uh, and probably maybe tomorrow or so. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, why get those? It's just one of those things to dial up your camera if you're into that. It also does protect it from scratches, especially lenses. You know, David, those um, yeah. something like the Sony Zeiss 55 millimeter yeah. that scratches so easy. And those really do keep uh, the camera, the lens looking good. Now, if you don't mind scratches on your stuff and you don't like making your camera look different than everybody else, then they're not for you, but they're actually really good. The other thing is the bottom sticker is like, it completes the bottom of the camera, which gives it a little more, they don't promise this or nothing or even talk about it, but I just know that it fills up a lot of the cracks and stuff, and you can modify the battery door in just a little bit to give it a little more water or weather protection when you put on wet surface. So that's what's new in the office, and I'll be doing that tomorrow. Are they hard to put on? Um, 
I, I I don't know what would I'm so handy with stuff. I always create things and make stuff. So for me, it's not. But if I were to just, uh, you'd have to check out my video and see if you think it's hard. I would say just you got to take your time because like any type of a like a sticker type thing, when it's like a long sticker, if you let it go and it you know yeah. sticks onto itself, you could still pull it apart. But you just got to be a little crafty and a little handy. If you're completely all thumbs and you can't paint like a straight line that it might not be the best but go to my youtube channel and look for lifeguard and you could see uh, a really good demonstration from like a camera top down on how to apply those and i love them uh, i like designing stuff so it makes my cameras look kind of cool oh cool how well, about you what's well, up with you well i've only been reviewing it uh, check out i've just put a review up of this uh the other day i see um, that. so i saw this nice tripod it's good because it's like my me photo one only it's a lot newer because i've had my me photo for a long, long time. But check out the review if you want to see how this one works. I'm very happy with it. Uh, really reasonably priced too. I think they're only just over two hundred dollars with free shipping anywhere. Um, good. So great. You know, I mean, great legs, all carbon fiber. How's, how's the size compared to your Mi Photo? It's about the same. Oh, that's good. And yeah. what about the standing height? I know I watched the video, but compared um, to your Mi Photo, because you didn't inches. Size I think this goes a fraction higher. Actually, it's about sixty inches, so it, it does go a fraction. Um, above that. And the other thing I'm going to review, which is up, uh, I'll probably put up today sometime, is this new little backpack from the same company uh, that sent this. So this is also KNF concept as well, but it's good because it's a very small one. Yeah, it looks um, very small profile. It, yeah, it's nice for uh, if you just want to carry around one mirrorless camera um, and, you know, just some bits and pieces and a couple of lenses. The, you can't put any things like laptops or, or iPads or anything in this, but it's minimal. But I used this when I went away to Echuca and I loved it. So stay tuned Looks for good. the review on that as well. Um, Looks snazzy. Yeah. Looking forward to your reviews. Hey, speak about reviews, I the, the image quality of your review that you did with the Pocket Osmo oh, Osmo Pocket thing yeah. and the other that, that that tripod review, the image quality coming out of that iPhone is just like mind-boggling. It was so much that I actually had to message him and say, like, what settings were you using and all that? Because it's just really astounding. And you were saying it has HDR and... Yeah, it's, what, the video, it's, just amazing. it's really interesting. Like, the video I posted yesterday had a couple of issues because if you looked at the start of it, the beginning part of that video where I was showing the tripod shows the full dynamic range using the HDR. But the problem was Kerry was shooting this and she was using it with the iPhone app. And then the second she moved away, the exposure changed. She didn't, we didn't lock it in. We'd have to use something like yeah. Filmic Pro or something like that, you know, and that could lock that exposure in. But if you're in control, like when I shot the uh, footage showing the iPhone uh, video oh. footage, Gorgeous. The HDR in the video side of this is unbelievable. And I was shooting in 4K60. Um, it's incredible. I mean, I've never sort of seen dynamic range like it if you want to capture things for beautiful sunsets and scenes. Because when I shot using this, um, because I showed a bit of footage yeah, from yeah. this against the uh, iPhone in one part where they both showed together, um, mm -hmm. the iPhone just blew it away. And, I, and that footage is unedited like it's just directly out of yeah. camera uh, it's, it was surreal watching yeah, it actually it, it, it was just like awesome what? it's just yeah really really cool uh, it brings a really cool and new look to uh your youtube videos i don't know if you're going to continue using that yes but, i am in yeah, fact just, in fact Aaron, it's it's taken away that urge now for me to buy a camera that's yeah. got 4k 60p because it is that yeah. good and with apps now on this like i've got one here that is called um what was it called it's called pro camera you can record two things at the same time so i can be recording this way the front camera is recording me and i can see both of this There's, it puts a little dialogue it puts a little square with me in the corner and then mm -hmm. i can shoot from the other screen at the same time and then it gives me the two files uh in 4k 60p by the way and then oh all gosh. i do is i take it into final cut uh, and just edit them both together so it's got me talking as well as what I'm looking at at the same time. Fantastic. And Filmic Pro, when that starts to release that, you'll have the four cameras that you can choose from. Yeah, but four cameras. All from it are 4K60. I mean, And the stabilization was off the charts on yeah, your video. Yeah, it's handheld. Like it's, yeah. And this is the thing now. It sort of made me think, boy, where, where are we going to be with these in two or three mm. years' time? I, I just cannot picture where we're going to be because look yes low light 
is still an issue. It's a small yeah, sensor. Yeah, it's a small sensor. Mm -hmm. But if you're dealing with daylight or good lighting, uh, or you control your exposure, uh, you can get unbelievable results. So check the footage out. Everyone said how beautiful it looks, and you know, and it's just from this, which is. I don't know. Yeah. The technology is amazing now, and I think now I'm going to start shooting with this all the time uh, because I Ooh. think the footage is so beautiful, and I don't care if everything's not out of focus. With reviews, I want everything in focus anyway. No, I think, you know what? Uh, people love that shallow depth of field. People love 24P, and I understand why. It looks pretty and all that stuff, but man, something about when you're doing like a YouTube video or you're sharing a location with people, and you can see it in that... Uh, 60p or whatever and, and everything's in focus it just really does look and as long as the quality is good like that mm. iphone is it just looks so surreal and watching your video i just felt like i was there and it just it's it's a it's a very different look to all the other videos out there that are shooting 24p or blurry backgrounds and i actually i actually liked it a lot and i would like to see more oh about the low light too most of your youtube videos because I don't know if you'd use this professionally, although you could, but most of YouTube videos, you know, you've got lights set up like this. You, you're you going to yeah. go out when the weather's right. And yeah. I mean, you know, you're. it's not like you're going to, that's not your camera for weddings where, you know, ooh, if it's in a low light situation, what do you do? There's no like what ifs about it. It's it's a iPhone camera for uh, B-roll and stuff that you can control. I think it'd be great. I, th I think I could use it for weddings, for formals and things like that. I think the quality is good enough easily to do oh, that. Oh, it's really good. But, um... I think the second I went to the reception and stuff like that where it does start to get more low light, well, then you may have an issue and I'd have to use then the full frame cameras. But right. it's certainly after using it, and I'm going to go and do a, a portrait shoot soon and I'll do one with lighting and everything and just see how it looks like that as against my Sony. So I'll, I'll review that as well. But looking at how good this is, I could easily use it for professional work. No, no doubt about it in good lighting, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I felt like that with the Osmo. I mean, if it's good lighting and hey, I just did a, a, a review on that light stand finally and I just used a little screen on the Osmo, man, that's just a bad idea. I just couldn't see if things were in focus yeah. or composed and stuff. So, you know, having the iPhone, it's just with that stabilization, I mean, it's like you are. Would you put it on a gimbal still or would you still do it handheld if you do, did a well, wedding? Well, probably only because then if you get it, I, I mean, I've got the Osmo 3. I, I bought that. It's not sent to me. I actually bought it. Um, I probably would still use it on a gimbal because I think it would uh, even make it better. And then you've also got like a, a bigger handle and I can do time lapses and all these sort of things with oh, it. Yeah. Uh, this, with something like the Osmo 3, is incredibly powerful, like like incredibly powerful. And, and like I said, to be able to shoot 4K60 with the front camera and the back camera at the same time, Amazing. it's just awesome for vlogging and doing reviews and stuff like that. And the quality is... Superb. I mean, that 13 mil wide angle lens is really wide. Uh, so it's just great. I mean, I, I no, just You know it. what? Like when you're vlogging, there's no more flipping anything back around no. and getting all this no. mess or, or whatever. Yeah. You just film it all like this and explain what you're talking about. And then um, I don't think you'd have to film it picture in picture. They're both taking different videos. Takes, so it, you shows can... you on the, it shows you on here picture in picture. But, but oh, in it the, gives you two separate files. Yeah, so you can yeah. edit those in really nice professional ways and not yeah. have to flip things around and yeah. all this other stuff that we have to do all the time. Just talk about it, and if there's a point where you think you should be seen uh, saying something or pointing to something behind you and want to be in the shot, whatever, you can just edit that part in. I mean, it's really good. Oh, what mic, what uh, microphone audio setup did you do using I the used, iPhone when you uh, did that? I used this. I used, I recorded that and recorded off... Um, camera and synced it back later on but i can put there is a road uh video mic uh, it's a road lapel mic that plugs straight into my iphone so i can do it that way if i'm doing stuff like this where it's just in front of me like that uh, I can lav plug, mic. yeah i can plug the lav mic just straight in and then that audio just goes straight in so i can do it that way uh with the reviews that i was doing because i was too far away i used that but the review of the um Osmo? The review of the Osmo was the iPhone uh, audio completely. I didn't use uh, syncing in oh, that you... at all. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. I wanted to check. I wanted to see how the audio was, and it's it's pretty good. It's really good. I mean, yeah. it sounded great. Okay, all right. pre show over. So let's over. go. We're going to go to – let me just take this pre-show off, and I'm going to press the start banner, guys, and we're going to start the um, – we're going to start the show. So I'm going to put the uh, pre-roll on now. 
or watching the number one YouTube live stream hosted by David Osler, Aaron J. Anderson. Get the latest in photography news, gear talk, tips and tutorials. We are here, we are live, behind the photo. Learn, grow, share. Here we go. Good day, everyone. Uh, we've hey. just had a bit of a pre-show. Aaron's uh, wiping himself down there because he's extremely hot. Um, always hot, always hot. Yeah, we just had a bit of a pre-show, said hello to everyone. Fire away questions, guys, if you uh, want to, because we will come back with a bit of Q&A later on, or you can just talk amongst yourselves or whatever. Um, we'll go through stuff. Uh, we probably will go back and forth every so often, or whoever's talking will be checking the um, chat as well. But we've got stacks of people in here now. We've got 70-odd hey, watching, so if you can, please give us a thumbs up. It does uh, get the show out there, because often you don't get the notifications, which is a pain. Um, so please, if you can, uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, we do this show weekly. We just missed last week due to the fact that Aaron had a potential uh, hurricane or cyclone uh, was going to hit, and we, so we were worried that he was going to lose power, so we missed last week. But next week it'll be on Aaron's channel. Um, so right. please subscribe to Aaron if you haven't, because um, it'll be on his live next week as well. So what are you drinking today, Aaron? We are drinking every show. I'm running out of mugs, though. <laughs> We've almost did this a year, this show, and I've had lots of mugs, as you can see, because every show I pull out a new mug that me and my wife get on our travels. This one is in Epcot, and that's down there in Florida. And the coffee I'm drinking, my friend uh, Nanette went on a cruise, and she got this coffee and brought it back back from me because she back for me because she knows I love coffee, and it's from Aruba. So that's what we are drinking today. How about you? Well, I'm just drinking uh, my son's Four Seasons Concreting Cup, actually. My son owns a business of concreting. Um, and earth moving, so I'm using. I'm actually drinking out of his cup that he gave me today. So uh, oh, the cool. weather's starting to warm up though today. It's going to get to um, what are we today? It's about 25 degrees. So it's only spring here. Remember, we've just hit come out of winter, so we're 25 today. So it won't be long, and I'll be having the uh, other coffee with you guys again, seeing that it's starting to warm up. <laughs> That's too funny. That other coffee yeah. always has to have yeah. to have these. If you do too much, you, you're going to fly yeah. away. Yeah. So. Uh, by the looks of your videos, it doesn't look very hot there. How much? How? What was the temperature? Because you were all bundled up. I thought you were going skiing or something. Yeah, well, because on, we're in the uh, when we go to Echuca, that's inland, so it's it's sort of in the outback. So it's like a desert region. Uh, so the nights get very very cold, and it was one degrees uh, Celsius uh, when I um, shot cool. that. It was that cold. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's not cold, I suppose, to European standards, but it was one degrees. But the temperature during the day got to twenty seven, so it was beautiful. But it was. Because we were up at around about six o'clock as sunrise came up, um, you know, it's very, very cold out there. Uh, whereas today it's just beautiful. I mean, we don't get as cold here uh, like we do inland. So that's why I had all jackets and everything on because it was freezing. Yeah, I was shocked when I seen you because last time I talked to you, like it's, it's springtime and all this yeah. stuff, and I saw your video of these beautiful yellow flowers. And then I, next time you have this stocking cap on and a yeah. jacket, like, what? Yeah. It was kind of funny. But yeah, it's okay. uh, no oh. doubt we'll be very, very hot shortly, though, that's for sure. If you want to show the the photography and videography school, I, I'm not in control today. Yeah, let me David's in control, uh, come but... over here. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't, guys, wanna... liked this, Go ahead, um, if you haven't liked the photography and videography school, please do because it's an extension of Aaron and my channel as well as uh, a lot of other photographers. Uh, just let me move that down so we can see what it is. You've got to use the Appasan, so it's photography and videography school. Uh, I also put in notes like today I shared that we were going to go live, so it's a good way of seeing where we're going live. We've got over five, nearly 5,400 members now. We're two off uh, 5,400 members. Uh, so it's growing very, very quickly. Great positive site. Yes. We don't allow very any positive. prima donnas in there at all. If you start giving bad critiques or being nasty stuff, you're going to get one warning and then you'll be booted. Um, so, you know, just join us in there, guys. It's for videographers as well as uh, still shooters. Um, you can share your web pages, you can share your Instagram feeds, uh, everything. So, you know, please join us there. It's just a great positive um, site. You can see there's one there, how to shoot cinematic video with smartphone, 11 Pro. Yep. Uh, Gilbert's posting a stack of stuff in there as well. That's so, cool. yeah, please join us there. 
Very nice, very nice. So, yep, go over there, and we'll see you over there. Uh, we're going to go to we the are, first... We uh, are, because there's been a, uh, some announcements um, from GoPro, Aaron, I noticed. Now, just to show you here that uh, what's happened here is that I suppose GoPro had to combat this, because if you look at the way the Osmo actually worked, uh, let me just turn this on. Now, obviously, it's got the back screen on there at the moment, but if I switch that back screen... This was one of the big advantages uh, of yeah. this is that you can see from the front. So if you are doing selfies or whatever you're doing, uh, you can see it from the front. So I was wondering if or when GoPro were going to counter that. And it looks like it looks like they have because um, if I switch that off and go back to this web page, um, they've released a couple of different cameras, Aaron. So they've released this one called the Max. It's interesting how they've put Max in there, whether they're copying the iPhone name, I'm not sure yeah, because I know. that's, yeah. But the, the interesting thing here is that it, it's showing the front facing screen now on this, but it gets a bit more than that because they've also now saying it has a dual lens camera that you yeah. can shoot to use regular ultra wide video, but it also has 360 degree video as well. So it's mm -hmm. like an Insta360. Now I'm getting an Insta360 sent to me shortly to review. so. I'm pretty excited about doing that. That's cool. But um, this looks pretty cool. The fact that you've, you know, you've now got 360 degrees. Uh, it gives you that vlogging style. You've got the expansion mods as well. Um, but it's saying it's waterproof to five meters. Uh, it yeah, does. That's pretty crazy. Resolution maxes out at 5.6K30. So it's actually over 4K. It's 5.6K30, which is interesting. Uh, yep. And you've got 14, 40, 60. So it's a pity it hasn't got 4K 60, uh, mm -hmm. but it does have 5.6, which is interesting. It's got true to life 360 degrees audio and deliver the best stereo sound ever from a GoPro. Uh, there's a video lock. I'll put these links down below so you can have a look. Um, but I don't know. Uh, what do you think, Aaron? Do you think this is an interesting um, camera? Yeah, I think it's kind of cool because... Uh... You know, they're they're doing something different than what iPhone has, and that is that 360 camera capabilities. So, you know, that's kind of you know, kudos to them if they want to, you know, try to pull away from the iPhone because the iPhone is really good quality. But, of course, the iPhone can't do what this can do smaller. Uh, the iPhones are waterproof now, aren't they? Or yeah, no? they're waterproof, I think, to four meters, I think. So they're waterproof as well. But it's cool to have the 360 on now. I've never had a GoPro before. Uh I, I never, I guess, never felt the need to have one, but this one looks just really top notch. And the audio was always kind of bad on these, so mm. they're saying that they have really good audio now too. And didn't I read somewhere it says it has a mic jack? Well, I'm not sure because I can't see a mic jack anywhere. That might be one of the optional extras that you can put on, Aaron. It's five hundred dollars. Uh, it's going to be available starting the twenty fifth, um, but I can't see anywhere where it shows. I see a headphone jack. Yeah, uh, but. So I'm not sure. But I noticed, too, in here, the, uh, the ability to shoot 360, I think, as part of this, though, is is pretty cool. But the other ones that have been announced as well as the GoPro Hero Black, if I open that up. Yeah. So there has been normal GoPros announced as well. Um, and you can see that they're basically the same as what the other ones uh, were with uh, that sort of mono screen that's facing the front. Uh, so it hasn't got that dual screen. Uh, this does 4K, 2.7K, and 1440 and 1080p. Um, it also has these attachments that you can see. So you can get an attachment on there if you want to go that way and have that uh, there. I think that's a microphone probably here uh, looking yeah, at Yeah, one that. of them has it. Yeah, I've got to shut down. Um, oh, it's Messenger. It's all right. Um, but that's, they're going to be, does it give price? $400. So I think you save $100 by getting this, but I think I would go directly for the other one, which is $100 dearer, yes. But by the time you probably bought that uh, monitor to face the front, you haven't got the 360 degrees that's available with this. Uh, I think yeah. I'd probably go for the other one over this. Um, now, I'm not sure, though, whether does that 360 degree one does that only shoot in 360 degrees or does it give you this is what i'm not quite certain about uh, oh yeah it says you can that... use a regular ultra wide video yeah so you can yeah. so it gives you both um which is which seems good so i think i'd probably 
go for that one more than the other one. But you know, I don't what's think. The, what's I don't the other think one I'll have? It. Yeah, what's the other one? The regular one have that the 360 doesn't have well the only thing it's well nothing really you've got to buy the attachments to get the front facing screen yeah you're missing the 360 degree video as well um so that's why i'm saying i think i'd get yeah and this does 5.6k as well so it's a much higher resolution uh sensor but i i don't think i'll get one of these because i've already got the osmo action anyway and you know and i'll probably use my phone more than what i'll use any of these but the reason why I won't get rid of this is because if I am using this for some things like sticking on bikes and uh, going yeah, and doing some decent swimming, like I don't want to take this into salt water. There's no way I want to take that into salt water, yeah. uh, whereas I could take that in there. So I'll, I'll keep this. But I, I think it's a good release from um, GoPro. I mean, at least they've done something different here. Uh, that this, this 360 one does interest me, though. I'd love to have a look at it and see how good the 360 uh, vision is that comes out of it and whether it's the same as what these Insta 360s uh, but like I said stay tuned for that because I'll get one of those eventually and I'll review it but now those instant 360 cameras uh, they're not waterproof or they're they're not durable in any no, I type don't think of so. fashion right so no. this kind of I mean if it's good we have to see it but it might kind of steal a lot of that thunder if you're getting the same capabilities but in a smaller package with uh, uh, screens on it and durable and <laughs> and all yeah. that stuff. I mean that'd be really cool to like put that on a mountain bike and then you could see the whole 360 while someone's yeah. going through paths and stuff. It'd be, be pretty neat. So you can like buy it. obviously there's flash extensions if you want to buy a flash to it that's that's probably a continuous light that you can stick on there. Uh, like yeah, I said, I you that. can buy that adapter that comes on if you want to face the front. Uh, but if you were going to go to that extent, I think you'd probably be better off just to buy uh, the other version, which, because I, I guarantee by the time you bought that color facing LCD at the front, it's probably the $500 anyway. Um, exactly. You know, and then. I guess it's options for people who just don't need it, they yeah, can save money, right? Yeah, so I suppose you could save $100 if you wanted to. But overall. I mean, it looks like it's going to be a good release. I haven't even checked the video yet. I just saw this this morning when I yeah, got I mean, up. Uh, so I thought we'd share it just to show you guys that something has been announced by GoPro. Um, but good on them, I think. Gerald's confirming, Gerald's confirming that one of them does have a mic jack. Oh, okay. Uh, that they might, did they put that on the cheaper one? So now if you get the 360 one, now you don't have the mic jack, you know? You know how they always kind of mix yeah, and match their, see if their it mentions, stuff uh, anything about the mic jack on these it may mention in the video that like i said i haven't looked at that video yeah. oh yeah, it does let us know in the uh, comments it says oh. the base uh media mod adds a microphone usb so there is a mod added that you've got to put onto this to put a microphone on according to this uh, so it says uh, the base media mod adds a microphone usb type c port a 3.5 millimeter jack uh, HDMI port and two cold shoe mounts. So there's a uh, an actual um, media mod that you've got to add to it to give you that ability. I think. Got it. Now that mic jack doesn't uh, get you one to want to get this over your Osmo action. No, probably not because you can buy that anyway. You, you can buy the adapter for this anyway that you can put that okay. microphone jack in. Now they're available now. Ah, um, got it. So, got it. And you can do that in your Osmo Pocket as well. There's a a, a there's a microphone adapter for this now as well. So if you want to take a mic jack straight exactly. in, uh, you can do that too. But but I think it, I think it's good. I think they've answered the Osmo action, which they had yeah. to do. Um, I mean, I'd hate to see GoPro going broke. And when Osmo released that last uh, camera, the Osmo action, yeah. I was a bit worried about GoPro. Um, yeah, a lot of people were. Someone did a video on is GoPro going out of business or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And because nobody was buying GoPros, they were kind of the same thing. But now this is a huge different upgrades. So I think they're back in the game. Yeah, and plus particularly how they've added the 360 now, they've really pushed this envelope now. So I think doing that is a, a yeah. great feature because from what I've seen with that, you can do some really great travel shots and things like that where you're doing, you know, the what those real wide extremes. Uh, so good on them. I think that's good. Cool. All cool. Right, so when that's, are you getting your 360? Uh, well, I don't know because the, there's a Chinese holiday at the moment, um, which is their 70 year anniversary or something. So I think mm. they're on holiday for another week, uh, and then they were going to send it out to me then. So, if, oh, yeah, I've just got to wait. So it might be a couple of weeks away. Yeah. Um, Okie dokie. So next story, which is the Canon. Uh, I wanted to show this because Canon really have lifted their game. It, look, I, I still believe it's a pity they uh, have put the Canon hammer, as Casey always says, 
uh, with things like the one card <laughs> slot and also the the terrible crop that Canon do. But yeah. if Canon now, because I'll show this in a minute, and we'll discuss this. But now, if Canon brings out a can uh, a camera that has dual card slots and they don't cripple something like the crop, boy, could they have Good a luck. great camera? Um, because they've released this firmware update, and I have to commend. Uh, Canon on doing this because they have given a really big update. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. a massive difference um, in performance. Uh, the firmware uh, versions, it's 1.4, and they're saying it promises enhanced eye detection autofocus for improved face and eye recognition at greater distances, improved autofocus performance. And I've been reading the chat, um, the chats uh, about this, the, the news groups, and everyone has been saying it has made a massive difference like night and day. So it really has uh, produced a, a great difference. It says it's reduced the lag time between the actual autofocus and the AF frame display, fixed a phenomenon in which the AF frame size cannot be changed. Um, anyway, I'll just show this. Let's see if we can play this, because um, you'll see if we look at it. Let me just put this on mute. And you'll see uh, when the girl's actually walking how much better now this AF has been. Uh, the one on the right is before, the one on the left is now. And you've seen how immediately the eye autofocus has picked up the girl when she came in. I I'm talking, yeah. it is a drastic difference in how much uh, the AF has performed. But the IAF box, though, is bigger than what Sony have got, though. Now, I don't know if that makes... Uh, any difference it's sizing though yeah it, it looks like it gets bigger and smaller yeah. so it looks like it's going from face yeah. and eye it may so i don't know you know uh this is also showing tracking with um a like i think it's a scooter or something coming around how it instantly grabbed it the second it came on uh and it follows that uh thing right the way through i mean it does oh, motorcycles. it looks like it's really a good um, update, Aaron. I mean, like I said, I yeah, it looks like it. I um, like I said, I, I thought I'd check mm -hmm. news groups because they're often the best place that you can check to see when people upgrade uh, these <clears> firmware uh, exactly. versions to see if it has made a difference. And most of them in the news groups, the Canon uh, news groups, are saying that yes, it has made a massive difference. So it looks like Sony, uh, Canon now are getting very, very close to how Sony's autofocus uh, works. Uh, extremely close when you look at it. I know Nikon have just done updates recently too, where it's improved the autofocus as well. Um, so I think probably in another, it might be another year or so or whatever, I think you're going to find that uh, Canon and also probably Nikon are going to have the same focus basically as what Sony's got. I, I think looking at how much they've improved that uh, EOS R and the RP autofocus. Uh, it's one thing now where I say that uh, as a Sony user, I don't think Sony can no long, can any longer uh, rest the, on the we've got the best yeah. autofocus that's available. Yeah. Uh, they're now going to have to say start doing, well, we're going to have to either up it. And I'm not sure how it can get much better than what it is like now because it is just unbelievable now how good it's got. But they might have to start giving us other features that you know we also want um, to push that boundary again. It's going to be interesting to see where it's... It's gone, but I know looking at the results that I've seen and reading news groups and things like that, that Canon are now getting pretty close to what Sony's uh, autofocus is, and I think that's great. Like I said, I, I really think competition's fantastic. Uh, I hope Canon does well. They've just got to stop doing stupid things like putting one card slot in and, and yep, if they stop that, that they can take it. Yeah, having that crippling of the. Uh, you know, of cropping in on the uh, the sensor for video because let's face yeah. it, their lens mount is fantastic. Their lenses are brilliant. I mean, they they probably produce some of the nicest lenses that are out there. Uh, the camera seems to be great overall. The autofocus now is fantastic. It's just limited by those things like the one card slot and um, that they could fix themselves. They, and, they and could be yeah. back in the lead, you know. And no twenty four p. What's going on, Aaron? Yeah, no, yeah, 24 no 24p. Feet. We've talked about this so many times. It's just yeah. mind-boggling. Now, I had a question. On the Sony A, uh, A9, does the focus does the focus tracking points go all the way to the edge like the Sony A7 III? Yes, it goes right to the edge. And does the Sony A7R4 also? Yes. Or is it... Oh, so they all go to the complete... Yeah, I think, the, yes, but the A9 still has more focus points overall. It's got a fraction more. Um, mm. I think it's more contrast detection. I can't remember, but yeah, they basically cover most of the screen. I think it's 97 or 98% of the screen 
the A9 now, does. Now, what, what was the Canons? Is it this? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I I, yeah, I don't really... know. Yeah, I don't know what that because, is. Well, you were saying how could Sony up that, and so that would be one reason. One way is just to go completely to the edge, but if they already have that, because I know my Sony A7R3 is basically, it's not in the center, but it doesn't go all the way to the edge. Yeah. And I realize like if I'm doing like a full body shot and someone's head goes outside those focus points, I get some type of pulsing. So I have to kind of re do the recompose type thing still with the A7R3. But if that's fixed on the Sony A7R4, then it, does the A7R4 also have that same tracking abilities as the A9? Yes. So then the A9 II, yeah, what can they do better? <laughs> well, I suppose it, yeah, it's autofocus. Probably I wouldn't expect too much because I, I think it's maybe as good as it's going to get. I mean, that may improve at a fraction of a second that no one would yeah, ever notice. But it's more, yeah. with the A9 II, it's more things like the better buffer it's more things like right. giving us dual card slots that can take that buffer and clear it quickly. Uh, there are things like that that they can improve on the A9. Uh, a better sensor, obviously, a 36 megapixel sensor they're predicting to go in there. So uh, they're things like what they could fix immediately. So I wouldn't expect to see much better uh, in the what autofocus. About autofocus, do you have to switch from people to animals yes. physically? Yeah. Or manually? So maybe they could. Yeah, get they could do it automatically. So there are some, I don't know if that would be helpful to me or whatever, yeah. but there are still some little improvements that they could probably squeeze out of it and say, hey, look what we could do. Or maybe even further, you know, it can mm. do something further away and get an eye like really small. Uh, so See, the other thing too is that the Canon focuses in low light much better than what any Sony that's, camera does. Yeah, so that's another thing too that they could probably improve on the Sony low cameras light. is is better low light focusing because the Canons are amazing at it. I've tried one myself and it was almost a dark room and it was yeah. focusing it's like the gh5 used to be like that the gh5 even though the focus was very slow in in video still was focus, unbelievable yeah. uh yeah, in it was really very cool. very low light and the canon is is very very similar i think it's minus five or something it'll focus in which is uh, it was um much better than what i'd got in any uh sony uh camera that i'd use so you know this this look there's all they have to do, all Canon have to do is is seriously stop trying to protect their high-end video cameras, stop this ridiculous crop that they're putting in on their uh, their cameras, uh, yep. and put dual card slots in, and that camera will be amazing. And you know, it's... I always say, they, if the people who need the high-end camera, they're just going to get the high-end camera. The people who can't yeah. get it aren't ever going to buy it. So you might as well make cameras that people will buy over the same. Yeah. Uh, range from Sony and Fuji and all these and Nikon and stuff. I don't. They don't. I mean, I'm I'm not like an expert, so I don't well, know. Well, they if that's do. Really I mean, true, but it thing feels is, like it's true. Exactly, because uh, high end users want XLR slots on their camera, yeah, so, so they can so. plug straight uh, into XLRs. They want the hard drives built in because they they're recording such big files that hard drives are already built in SSDs exactly. and things like that. And they're still going to buy those cameras. They're not going to go out. You're not going to have a, a movie studio they may occasionally but they're not going to be shooting with a canon eos r they're going to be using you know exactly. more of their high-end models so canon are just hurting themselves which yeah is smaller silly. production houses uh of course there are some out there that do dslr filming and stuff like that for sure we i was in one when we did a, a tv show but most of them if they want that or need that big camera they're going to buy it they're not going to say "Ooh, the new esr eos r thing came out with all the stuff let's buy that instead I don't think they're going to do that. They're going to, like you just said, I'm repeating what you said. So if they just came out with those little things that Sony already have and Nikon already have and Fuji already has and all, I mean, they could be king again. I don't know why they're doing that. But then they keep taking things off. Here, here we go talking about but, it again. Yeah, but they, the interesting thing too, Aaron, is this is where Nikon have such a big advantage because mm -hmm. they've got no uh, high end to protect. So yeah, they don't have nothing. I don't think, they... yeah, they may bring out a camera that has everything and could blow the whole industry apart because that now that they're very good, they are very good in video now. That the, the Z6 and Z7 cameras are really good in video. Again, they put one card slot in that. I mean, who knows why? But if they bring out a camera that, you know, has 4K60 or 4K120 with great autofocus like it already has, uh, yep. they may be the ones that you have to look out for because they, they're not going to hold back. Yeah, that's really true. They don't Sony have, have the high end. Back. Sony still have yes. the high end that they may be protecting. 
Yeah, you know, we didn't talk about Fuji, but their um, eye autofocus is getting really good too. I would, I think they could get really close in their next iteration of cameras. We didn't talk about that. Now their high end, it goes like way high end. It goes up to medium format. So that's maybe why they're putting a lot of uh, really amazing features in their, I guess you'd call it the lower end uh, market because they don't have that high end to really mess around with like Canon mm. and Sony. So that's why they're really taking strides forward. Once uh, once uh, Fuji gets that autofocus down, because that's one of the reasons why I kind of went back to Sony was that eye autofocus was just made it just so easy to get shots yeah. where the Fuji wasn't quite there. If you had both and you use both, you kind of get that. If not, fine. But I think their next cameras, they're going to be right up there too. So it's going to come a point where, yeah, Sony's not going to have any more bragging rights where like all cameras just focus just mm -hmm. like they did three years ago. They all caught up to the same. So I probably next year they'll all be pretty close to the same, and that's not going to be a deciding factor anymore. So these other camera manufacturers got to put those dual card slots and other things to keep up or someone's going to – you know, overtake that market. Well, Panasonic don't hold back. I mean, apart from their audio They focus, never held back. I switched to them years yeah, ago. Yeah, but they've, but they've their, got a high-end. Their footage end, was so much better. And they've they have got high-end high cameras, but they don't I hold think because, their features back. Because they get it, like I said, the people who need high-end are going to buy it. They're not going to buy yeah. a small little yeah. camera for a production house where if I want to just create my own little company and do wedding photography, I'm not going to buy a big one regardless of any. I'm just not going to buy it, so I'm going to... So yeah, uh, Panasonic gets it. So I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, yeah. They got amazing cameras. Now they need to get that out of focus because if, if you've only known me for a little while, at least maybe two years on my, uh, on my uh, YouTube channel, I've been a Panasonic fan for years. I love it. But once that Sony a7 III with that autofocus and I experienced that, bye-bye Panasonic. So if they can really you know, get their autofocus down, they could be really, really good camera. Yeah, and they could. I don't know why they don't go. They need to get rid of that system and go. Um, yeah, I don't know why. Face. I mean, Are they, they need just to get face too proud detection. Of it or? I don't know. I've got no idea that they really need to be putting face detection on those cameras. If they put face detections on that, you know, and it'd yeah. be amazing. Like Black Magic is the same. You know, that they're using a yeah. similar system. But then again, yeah, I suppose the, I their that, market yeah. is that videographers are going to be using manual focus manual anyway. Focus. Well, yeah, so, they're. They're video concentric where Panasonic are both. So Panasonic really does need to get that where Blackmagic, yeah. But how helpful would it be if you had a Blackmagic camera that's shooting raw and 5K or whatever it is, a 6K now that can track oh, like yeah. the A9? I mean, like we always talked about, I would always, you know, manual focus myself for certain shots. But if it's really reliable, there's a lot of shots, especially on a gimbal, where you don't need a wireless focus puller to focus shots, and you could do certain shots that would require a really good autofocus system. Yeah. So I think, yeah, Panasonic and them, they could really, really go after the market if they just get their autofocus better. But good on Canon. I mean, uh, I think yeah. like Nikon have had a good update with recently, too, with their firmware. Canon have now given up uh, good firmware. I mean, Sony, too, we have just recently. I've just got the A9 update as well. So at least now the companies seem to be giving good updates yeah. in firmware and looking after the users, which was a great thing. Sony used to be terrible at it. Uh, now Fuji they started to, all that, yeah, I think. They did. Fuji was the best at it. Uh, yeah. So at least now Sony, even Sony, are giving decent firmware upgrades. So, you know, let's hope that continues. All right, so next yep. story, if you want to put the time in there, Aaron, is yes, this. Indeed. I saw this the other day, and I, I um, again, this is something that I have to watch uh, a couple of the videos to see how this looks. But it looks like it's a, a pretty good um, uh, light strobe. Now, I suppose this competes with the Godox. Um, their AD400 um, strobe. And some people in the chat may be able to talk about this when we uh, go to the Q&A side of things. But What's up, photo me? Yeah, it looks looks great. I mean, it looks really uh, quite uh, beautiful in the design. So it does look like it's yeah. very, very nice in the design. A couple of things that I like about it too is that you can have uh, the battery power and also doing trickle feed at the same time. So you can run it off the wall uh, if you want to yep. run that way. Um, so it's a 400 watt mono light and it uses this universal wireless. Now this is really interesting because I'm, I'm not sure if there is any others like that. Uh, someone may be able to correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but the beauty of this system is that, I'm just scrolling down, yeah. is that it works with all of these cameras right from the get-go. You got get -go. the picture up? Yeah, so it works with Canon, yeah. Nikon, Sony, uh, Panasonic, Olympus and Fujifilm all from the same trigger. 
Like that's very, fantastic. Very cool. um, and it's 570 for the strobe and $100 for the trigger. $120 with the Sony adapter. So you must need an adapter for something. Oh, uh, I don't know what that's for. Oh, yeah, because that'll be how you get your, t- your um, exactly. uh, TTL, TTL and, and HSS. So it's just a, yep. another 120 if you want to go Sony. Uh, the AD400 Pro goes for 660 So that's the um, actual, um, what do you call it? The um, oh, adapter, or not the adapter, what do you call them, Aaron? The... Um, the uh, trigger. trigger. <laughs> I went blank. That's the trigger. <laughs> I didn't know where you were yeah. going. I said, how'd, how'd you forget that? Yeah, so I, went, I didn't I went really blank. realize you forgot uh, it. It looks really nice. Yeah. Like, it looks very, very detailed. Um, very, very nice. I'm not sure uh, some people that use Godox may be able to say, is this a Godox ripoff or is it a, a, a complete new design? But the design looks really nice when I'm looking at this uh, trigger. It looks lovely, actually. And uh, I like how it's organized. Has, yep. Go ahead, Aaron. Has the... Uh, yeah. I think we're uh, yeah the the trigger also has a lithium battery inside it which is pretty cool because I don't I know the, the Godox which one uh, no which what is that company yeah Godox um, the car- the the flash themselves have rechargeable batteries but the the <laughs> what did you just what did I just help the you trigger say? <laughs> the trigger <laughs> oh my god what, what the heck is going on around here I really forgot oh my gosh the trigger. They still use double A, so it'd be kind of cool to have an option of using uh, that. I don't know if it's completely that. The one thing that I don't like is when certain equipment has like internal only, where you can't yeah. change the battery. So I don't know if that's the the thing going on here, because that's like the worst. Because if the battery dies, you're like, oh, yeah. you can't change it. So I don't know if that's there, but I do like the option of rechargeable batteries. Um, one thing in the ham radio, uh, I don't know if anybody's ham radio out there, but a lot of the ham radios that you buy actually has like a cart. You, it comes with a chargeable battery pack, like flashes and stuff, but you can also get an accessory that holds double A batteries. I kind of wish some of the flashes had that, uh, option in case you're doing a shoot and you didn't charge it or the battery was bad. You can use double A from a store, but we have to figure out if that is the case for that. Is it internal? Can you switch it? I don't, it doesn't say it looks right like here. A, in, it, it, it looks like a really lovely design, though. Like, it's very, very well laid I, out. You can see you've got manual on the A channel, TTL on the B channel, TTL on the C channel. You can see how you've got your exposure compensation I love the on it. Uh, over here. Uh, you've obviously got sounds that you can turn on and off, and also dimming, I would say. Or that might be the actual the light. Uh, light at the front. Um, yep, the light. But it looks really nice. You know, and the flash itself, if we look at that, um, we'll scroll back up to here. Um, looks like it's nicely made out. You can see the uh, the power on the side. I do prefer, and that's yep. what I love about the Pro Photo. I do love having the flash uh, that all on the back because then you can see it. You often don't have it on the side. Yeah. You often have the light in front of you, and I like to be able to see that. That's what I love about the true, Pro true, Photo true. design. How it's on the back of the um, device, but uh, it takes the Bowens mount. I think they were saying so. It's a Bowens mount. Um, since it uses, since you can use it on all these different cameras, it's like it's you only have to really buy that yeah. one trigger, yeah. and you could switch cameras if you want. I mean, you're pretty much set for future proof. It says there that it's um, it's a one second recycle time, uh, and you have 480 plus full power charges, and that's a lot because you very rarely have to use these yeah. on full power unless you're trying to overpower the sun. It probably would last you all day. Uh, the official mm-hmm. recycle time of the strobe is 0.5. 0.05 uh, to 0.9 seconds. To 0.9. Uh, it also mm-hmm. says it does, it's got a nine stop output range and it can be adjusted in either 0.1 or one stop increment. So that's one great. Stop, yeah. uh, it does 20 frames per second at the lower power, which is also fantastic uh, as well. Yeah, so yeah. it's really fast. Um, 5,500 Kelvin. Uh, pl- uh, plus or minus 150 Kelvin. Color temperature throughout the entire range. It has TTL, HSS up to one eight thousandth of a second. What's Free Sync? Um, the Freeze. Where was that one? Oh, Free what Sync. Is free it, sync? Well, it it's actually goes faster, so it enables you to use it in freeze mode, which means you can stop motion. So the only issue is usually when you go into Freeze Sync uh, like that, it often changes uh, the color is not as consistent any longer. But you can uh, stop like water droplets and things like that, and that's giving you one one. Well, that's cool. Yeah, well, it's giving you one nineteen uh, hundredth of a second yeah. expo. Uh, yeah, shutter speed. 
a second. I mean, um, so that's great if you want to freeze water droplets or, you know, stop you're trying to like stop a bullet or whatever you wanted to do. Not a bullet, but you could stop, you know, other things. Um, you could try. Yeah, a removable lithium uh, battery. Uh, and that, that's what I like too. It's DC power and also AC trickle charge performance yeah. uh, as well. Uh, and it's the Bowens S mount. Uh, so it'll take all your Bowens and umbrellas and all that sort of stuff. Uh, as well but it looks really nice i really like the design i think the design's really quite lovely oh uh, no it doesn't have the thing on the back it's just a uh, just the name i think and that's probably the battery charge that shows on the back um looking at that but overall i, I think it looks like it's a winner yeah um, for the price it looks really good i'd love some people in the chat let us know about what you think about this as compared to godox because as you know i'm a pro photo user so um, I don't know that much about the Godox systems, so let me know whether you think this is as good as the Godox systems out there or better or what your feelings are about this. And you could also let us know in the chat uh, down below as well because I'd be curious to know uh, what you guys think. I do like how it's a universal trigger apart from... Oh, that must yeah, be the really adapter cool. there, Aaron, on the Sony. So that there is uh, the adapter um, that you, let me you can see, see you're there. At. If you look at all the cameras together, you can see that the Sony has like a big bump on the top of it. And that's, oh, yeah, that's obviously the Sony adapter for the hot shoe because that has those extra pins and stuff yeah. Yeah, that you'd need that. Um, but for the price, I think that's a really reasonable price. Like I said, it's certainly um, competition for the Godox. That's for Very cool. sure. Um, so let's open up quickly just to Q&A, just to see mm. what people are saying, because I'm just curious to know. <clears throat> if anyone's saying anything about it, I'll just go to where we're talking about that. They're talking about unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said they would sell the... Uh, Mark said he would actually sell my A7R3 for another A9. Yeah, well, Gerald loves good. his as well. Gerald uh, raves about his as well. Um the only thing, like I said, I can understand people saying that for some things, but for me, as a wedding photographer, um, there's certain things about the A9 that I do love and that can't be replicated, Mark. And, and the things that matter for me like that about the A9 is the silent shutter is totally reliable. Oh, yeah, that's So that's, that's one really massive cool. thing. The one thirty-two thousandth yeah. of a second uh, is also a game changer for me because I use I often shoot wide open... Uh, in daylight, and then if you're limited to one eight thousandth, you can't do that. So to have that yep. one thirty two thousandth of a, sh of a second um, shutter speed is massive for me. Uh, but to have no rolling shutter on the silent shutter is is huge, and I use the silent shutter all the time. So I would never give up my A nine, but I'd certainly one day may get the A seven R four. That's for sure. Um, or there could be an A seven R. There could be an A seven four coming out soon. That who knows what that will have. Yeah, who knows? I don't even know what direction they would take that. So let's with the other see. models having this and that. Probably just a more inexpensive, better autofocus uh, camera. Yeah. So people aren't mentioning much about that uh, thing. Uh, Photomix says Westcott Godox Pro Photo are the future. Um, uh, it's interesting how Westcott have gone into that thing though which is really interesting as well Gerald said obviously the Westcott strobe is made in China and will compete with Godox but they don't yet have a full lineup of strobes like Godox more for new users rather than folks switching uh, yeah it's interesting and yeah maybe and I think too um, Westcott also have a very good name too for in the industry because they've been sort of making uh, lighting stuff for modifiers. years, modifiers and stuff for years mm -hmm. so I think it's probably going to sell very very well uh, really well. Someone just asked if there's been any news about the A7S III. No. I mean, who knows? I, I keep hearing now that it may be mentioned soon, but and then I hear other people saying middle of next year before it's announced. Obviously, the A9 is going to be announced this month, uh, apparently, on the uh, Photokina. You're going, Aaron, aren't you? Uh, so what was that is last that one? Is that to Photokina? Are you going to Photokina? I'm going to Photo Plus Photo Plus, Plus I mean. Yeah, that's New York, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Photo Plus is, uh, yeah, it's like a month from yeah, now. Yeah, well, that may be the A9 announcement uh, actually there. Yeah, they're so. having us. I, I posted that on our Facebook. Yes. They're going to have, I guess Sony's going to have uh, not inside Photo Plus, but outside uh, in, in a, a genocent area of their own setup, which is kind of weird. 
Uh, I don't know what happened there. And I guess they might have the A92 over there. So I'll be there. I'm going to go check it out and see if that's true. Yeah. Gerald said, love his A7R4, but I also love the A9. Both have separate qualities. You're exactly right, uh, Gerald. Yep. If you want an amazing... Well, and there's... Look, there's certain things. The A7R4, and Aaron's finding this with his A7 III as well. There's amazing things about that camera. The A7R4 is the best crop camera that Sony produce. So, and that's one way you can look at that. You're getting two cameras... Uh, for the price of paying for one because you're getting an amazing full frame 60 megapixel camera and you also get an incredible crop sensor as well because what is it 26 megapixels I think yeah, uh, in the crop mode crazy. which is crazy uh, so you've got that two factors about that camera if you're after the ultimate resolution well then you clearly have to go for the Sony uh, a7R4 um, or the a7 III which I still think a7R3 which is an amazing value camera as well uh, particularly with how that pricing has gone down um yep. i probably will eventually replace I, I sold my a7r2 um so eventually i'll get something to replace that camera i'll just wait and see what comes out um well it's kind of cool like the a7r4 you can have uh, like you said put it in crop mode if you just are going to do normal type shooting or yep. whatever but if you get that 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 certain uh, thing you want to have really high quality, yeah. which I don't think I need 60, but it's very fun to have and to edit those type of files like the 42 megapixels on my Sony a7R III. But if you're doing like an event where you, it's just you just know they're not going to use 60, you could crop it and you still get 24. So yeah. that's like really, really, really crazy to be able to do that. I mean, the only thing you've got to understand if you do do that is you lose your full frame look. So that's the issue that you have to do. You're losing the wide that you can get with your full frame um, lenses. So that's something you have to yeah, consider. You yeah. So if you like shooting at 24 mil, well then all of a sudden you, you know, you're nearly 35. So it's, it's yep, uh, exactly. something that you've got to consider. Or if you like shooting with the 16 mil, you know, that it's then becomes a what 20 odd. So you've, you've got to consider that uh, as well in dealing with that. Uh, the A9, like I said, is still in a league of its own. It's nothing competes with that camera in the fact that you get that beautiful silent shutter that I use all the time that's very, very reliable, um, and there's no rolling shutter. And that one thirty-two thousandth of a second, uh, like I said, means everything to me uh, with the way that I shoot. So they're both for different uh, different things. Um, Photomix says the Westcott just rebranded the Jinbai uh, with the Godox biggest competition. Yeah, the, the Jinbai is what we used to get out here, um, and mm. now we get both Godox and Jinbai. They were the same. They're the same manufacturer. Um, they're just rebranded. That's that. all. Um, so the Westcott is like Flashpoint here in the states. Um, Gerald says uh, buy Flashpoint and get great USA support and real f uh, from the folks at Adorama. Uh, also, Trev said because uh, he was talking about Prodox and GoPro, uh, Pro Photo, um, they're in different market segments. Yes, they are. But having said that, I was worried when Pro Photo released that last little light that they did. I think that's a backward step by Pro Photo um, because Pro Photo have always been at the higher end and they've been known to be at the higher end of the marketplace. And I think releasing so that low-end light yeah. that you use for an iPhone is a downward step. And I hope that's not going to hurt Profoto in the end because I think they always could go for the fact of having quality and exactly. being at the high end. And Godox have released that first. So Godox actually released that small light or they've announced that small light for first because it's been uh, mentioned on, I've seen it online and it looks almost identical. So I think Profoto in this case have copied Godox, which is an interesting, oh, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. So you think yeah. they're just trying to grab some of that well, lower end market then? I mean, I, don't know. I, I just think that's the most you know? useless device I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I, I <laughs> why wouldn't you just use... I mean, I haven't got it in here, but you just use those lights that I've got. That's the, um, you know, the the uh, continuous uh, lights, rather than having that type of unit, which is this big, small. It's round. It's got nowhere near the power that like those bigger light modifiers have. If you're going to use right. an iPhone, why don't you just use continuous light and then do it and take the shot? Why do you need something that's this big, that's going to flash, that's going to look awful like it directly on flash <laughs> and it's true i haven't seen anything in the results from that that including all the pro photo shots that out there that, that the image looks to me like it's got yeah, an on-camera right. flash I, I just think it's awful but anyway yeah. uh, that's yeah <clears throat> all right so let's go um to do you want to show your photo aaron have you got it there ready to go sure 
Well, let me open it up. Mm -hmm. And we're going to share. Let's hope this now, works, did you put David. The, uh, don't forget to put the time in. Um, oh, yeah. To show our photo, Aaron. I'll just swap those around. Let me do that real quick. I forgot to do the other one. No, we haven't done that yet. We'll do. We'll talk about that after this. Okay. Okay. So let's do the whole share thing here. On uh, if you're new, we always share a photo. It's called behind the photo, and we show you guys, or basically tell you guys what we did. Sometimes we show you if we have behind scenes. But here's my photo. Uh, we were just talking about you know crop modes and all that stuff, and I have another photo here to show you first. Sometimes I do uh, like models on runways and stuff like this and here in this photo i just wanted to show you guys sometimes oh, now this was we were me and my wife were invited to this event i wasn't getting paid at this event so that was kind of cool because it allowed me to experiment and just do whatever i wanted basically but you usually get an assigned seat or you got to go real early and, and first come first serve uh you can see here i'm in the blue and a lot of these uh runways have a section where the photographers or videographers are are able to stay basically uh the different events have different rules but as you can see i'm sitting here and when you're in a row like this and you're sitting lower than the actual stage or the models you cannot stand up because then your head's going to be another photographer's position so you have to kind of stay in this position which isn't that great because that means you're going to be shooting up on the models and you know it's not always the best so what i took with me is just the sony zeiss 55 millimeter and i wanted to see if i can do a runway with just using uh just one prime using crop mode and stuff like that so this is the shots i were getting when i was there in the 55 millimeter which was actually good enough uh to get full bodies but like i said i wasn't getting paid so i can kind of do whatever i want i ended up just putting it in crop mode which gives me about what 82 or 83 millimeters at 18 megapixels and 18 megapixels is still a whole bunch the more megapixels we go the more it just sounds terrible when you mention a smaller megapixel it's like oh my gosh what are you going to do with that but it's still really good for most everything and i knew these anyways weren't going to be blown up to 20 by 30 or more i mean you could still blow it up 20 by 30, still look great. But anyways, so what I did is I put it in crop mode and I basically seen these lights in the background as the models were walking around. So I kind of set a certain position and I use crop mode and basically I expose, I, you have to wait till a few models come through and get your exposure or sometimes I have my wife stand where the models are going to be and I set the exposure on her and so then you don't miss any of the models but I just waited till they came around got the exposure I exposed for the bright uh, highlights on the models and this is just one photo of many but as they came around and you can see they you know looked in my direction and I was doing photos like that at you know the crop mode and it worked out really good I did get some full body shots not using crop mode and they were they looked great but I just liked getting a tight shot of this how the lighting was and the lights here now one thing that i realized that i never realized before let's see where that uh other photo was if you're ever going to do a runway you could see like almost all the photographers wear black well guess what i wore a blue shirt and what that did was when the models you know came around they looked right at me because i just not because I had the bigger camera or whatever, which is usually the case. They usually look at the bigger camera, but it's just because I was wearing blue. So their eye immediately went to the, 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 the bright guy in, in the, the group there. So I was getting these really cool shots of the models looking at me. And that's about it, David. That's, that's how I got the shot. Thank you. Uh, let me just switch back to here. It was nice, Aaron. I really liked that shot. Thank you. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Uh, so let me just bring this one up. I got to get back up here. I'll just Am I back on your screen? Yep. Or? I was just going to show this okay. one. So this was one I just wanted to show. Um, I was just going to show it with this stuff in here. I'll put this up. Oh, what's that doing? Um, let me just make it a bit smaller so you can see the whole thing. There we go. Mm -hmm. uh, this was a shot I did up in a forest. Um, I wanted to try and get a mist, sort of mystical uh, little red riding hood type shot uh, in uh, this beautiful forest that was sort of up there. Mm -hmm. but, but I noticed mm -hmm. uh, there was light sort of beam coming through the forest and it was just Gorge. hitting this spot where I ended up sticking the model. But 
it wasn't as pronounced as it was there. Kerry actually is standing off to the left here, just out of the camera, uh, with my Profoto B1 with a. Uh, it's got the two foot octa on it and that's giving her some fill because it wasn't enough to it was more lighting her up from behind so i needed to add something to lift the face up and add a, add a bit of contrast on the uh, the left hand side that you can see there um, so all the the beams and stuff coming in through here were, were naturally there because it was that light beam coming in through the forest um, it wasn't quite as dark at the bottom i've actually darkened that bit off at the bottom there and i've had the flash that gives uh, the model, the look that's sort of there. And I asked her to sort of bend over a little bit with her head and uh, we've put a little basket there with apples in it. Um, and I love the lighting. I love the mm. way it looks. Almost looks painterly really when you look at it. Um, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. I, I love this uh, this image. I think it's typical of what I often do go to, which is that very moody um, sort of dark type look that I often go back to whenever I'm doing this sort of stuff But I love the forest. I love the you know, the light beam that's sort of coming out and hitting her But just thought I'd show that uh, just to show something a little bit different um, Lit up with uh, natural light and also the front was lit up by uh, the Profoto B1. So that's that It looks amazing. I have a question. Yep. Do you? Um... <laughs> Let me get off that so I don't get confused. Did you like see this location at some other time? Is that we got to go back and shoot that at a certain time, or was you just no? We were just around well. The woods and... I always go. This is up when we we did the snow shoot. Uh, so when we drive down to the bottom, there's all the tree ferns and everything there. So I know that spot is there. This was the first time we used it though. So this uh, and I often just look and I'll I'll look around and I'll see where the light's falling. And then I'll think, yes, I, I want them to stand in that spot. So on this occasion, when we went there, um, I hadn't used it before, no, but I did notice the light and that's what made me jump to that spot because um, we stopped the car, pulled over and walked in probably 50 meters. And then that's where we did that. It was quite hard to get in because it was very dense um, and stuff yeah. like that, like all ferns on the floor and you, you didn't know whether you were gonna fall, you know, <laughs> fall down a gully right. or whatever. Um, but it's just beautiful yep. and I love that type of look, that natural sort of look and I, th I, saw it, I felt it fitted that Red Riding Hood. Um, Absolutely, perfectly. is that the only shot you have of a girl in a red? No, I've like got that? others because I usually do one yeah. every year. Yeah, because I've seen another one. Yeah. That's a, I, think, I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful and you just had the light perfect right there yeah. i mean look at that so anyway so that that's, looks gorgeous that's that one. now aaron you wanted to talk about because uh we'll just bring this back up uh you wanted to discuss um where were we the show schedule in here uh, you wanted to discuss talking about photographers uh respecting photographers um yeah do you want to discuss that because you've put this down you, you were talking about uh saying how photographers look at your work <clears throat> and they sort of yep. don't respect what you were thinking at that time. I think that's what you were trying exactly. to say. So um, I'll cross over to you and you can uh, fire away with it. Yeah, it was. there was like, this doesn't happen a lot to me, unfortunately, but it does, it happened a couple times, you know, when you're posting photos, but I see it a lot of just other people's posts and stuff like that. And that is, uh, and what I just came up with this uh idea or whatever is I posted a photo of my wife and her friend and to get that shot was like really like specific like because I'm there I'm looking around and I took the shot and it was a nice shot and when I posted it uh, and now you're gonna say like well if you post stuff you need to you know have thick skin and all that it's not it at all it's just if you're watching this just be mindful of when you comment on other people's because I, I can care less what you say about my work but just be cautious because it, it could you know, it could mess up someone, uh, someone new starting because I've seen that happen too before. But I here's the issue. You take a photo and then someone will comment and say, uh, this photo is terrible. If I was there, I would have changed this and changed that and used this and used that and did this and did that. You get like this stuff and it's like, OK, so it's happened once to me. So I said, let me take all his pointers and just let him know that, you know, these are the situation. I wasn't mad or nothing. Just these are the situations. So one of the situa situations, he said, I would have moved the um, the 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 flash or I forget what he said, the flash or the softbox on the other side or something like that. So my first comment back to him was, well, it was impossible to move the light because it was natural light and it was a big a big window, you know. So that's you know number one. He said he would have moved the light, but I couldn't, right? And then the other one, 
the same guy said he, he like just critiqued the whole video. I wasn't even asking for any critiques. I just posted it. And the next critique was you should have had more space on that on the left side and not them right up against the right side. But then I said, well, on the left side, there was a wall that go from very f high, high top of this uh, building all the way down. And if I would have moved a literally just a millimeter over, there was two quite large people in bright yellow shirts sitting on the floor. One was standing, one was sitting on the floor, one was eating a sandwich, <laughs> one was on their laptop charging it. It's like, so see, he didn't know that that was there. That's why I have them pushed up against, you know, the kind of the side there. And that wall, if I would have went like this, there would have been a, a large line going down and you would have seen the rest of the establishment that had yellow lighting and the lighting would be off from the daylight and all that stuff. So I put that down, not in those many words. So I put that down. And the reason why I did that is I didn't want to see the two large people in yellow uh, shirts with the, 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 the line and all that stuff. And I had the window light over here. And there was a, a sign that says, I heart PR Puerto Rico. And the reason why I got that specific angle is because if I would have had the heart right behind my my friend, uh, our friend, my wife's a little shorter, my friend's tall, if I would have had it any different, the heart actually kind of looked like ears coming off of her red flowered thing, and it just looked weird. It looked like ears, you know? So there's all these things as a photographer, when they're there, I'm using the best they can, using the lens they got and all this stuff to get a shot. And then you see comments of like, well, if I was there, I would have did this. Then they just, they, they completely just like squash people's work. And it's like, you, dude, you weren't even there. So this is just kind of a call out to people who like to do that to people. Just be mindful that you weren't there and you don't know specifically exactly what was going on at that moment. And I see it all the time to uh, poor people like me. I, I can care less, but some people get like kind of sad, you know, yeah. like, oh, well, you know, I didn't really ask for the critique, but, and then they keep going on. Well, you should use a, Why'd you use 135 millimeter? You should have used an 85 millimeter. And the guy said, I didn't have an 85. I only had, so it was just like all this stuff. So I'm just asking you, if you look at something, it's easy to look at a photo and in hindsight say, well, you would have did this, you would have did that. Cause I mean, they took their time to maybe plan a shot out or you see it like in movies. Well, if I was the director, I would have did this and I would have did that. But I mean, come on, you don't even know the situations or yeah. uh, any guidelines people were under. So that's kind of the thing I wanted to talk about, David. Did you well, ever it's, see that yeah. in post or in your? And this is not asking for, yeah. uh, you know, uh, critiquing. What do you but, think, well, David? Well, the thing is, too, art is subjective, and this is the thing I always like to say to people. That's that the other thing. There's a reason why you shot what you did, uh, and mm -hmm. often, from what I've seen, the ones that do often say these things that the, these yeah this, their portfolio they, they never have. have a portfolio <laughs> uh, like they've never ever oh. got work to look at, and that's the interesting thing yeah. about that because yeah see as as a professional photographer, whenever I look at something, I, I may give it uh, advice if they ask for it, but if they don't, I will never say something bad. You should have done this. I just don't yeah. think that's right to do that because it's they may love that work for a reason like it's their artistic vision and that's that's what you've yeah, got to understand that you know and like you said there's often something outside of what they can't see in that image that that, that was the reason why you shot it the way you did but exactly. but the ones that are the worst at this the so-called trolls that are particularly bad in most of the facebook uh groups are the ones that bag everyone and everything and then they've never got any work themselves ever uh, and that's the thing. Like, how can you ever? I didn't bring give, that up. How can you ever give constructive criticism if you've got no portfolio to back up what you're saying? And that's the thing. And and really, I'll only ever give it if if I'm asked to give it. If I'm not, I'll just exactly. usually say something positive to the person. I might give a hint, like say, oh, you know, it, it may have been a, a little bit better if if you could have had added a bit more exposure to the face or something. Like, I might say that. But if they haven't asked for it, I won't even usually say that either. Um, but it, right. it's yeah, it can be terrible. The the internet is a very horrible place for, particularly for new photographers, um, and I think that's why a lot of women yeah. very rarely Siri. put comments up. Trust Siri. Um, that's why yeah. a lot of women don't yeah. like to post stuff much because they they get a bit intimidated by these trolls, these yep. guys that will tear them to pieces. Uh, and, yeah. and I think it's horrible, and that's why I encourage people particularly to, say, even join our group at Facebook, because that won't happen there. Uh, you won't yeah, get that does. type of thing in the photography videography school. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's just a topic I wanted to bring up. If you're watching this video and you and you're a nice guy, but you just always are critiquing people's work that's not asking, maybe you shouldn't, you know, because I did see people in comments. They actually kind of got offended. You know, uh, you could just see their demeanor and, you know, Texas always have their own demeanor, but you could just tell that they were hurt by the certain people saying, well, I would have did this. Why'd you do that? And that's awful and stuff like that. And man, it's so easy to, in the hindsight, look at a beautiful piece of work that someone designed and or their situation. And then you just, well, I would have did this. Well, you didn't do it in the first place. And I'm so glad you brought it up because that's one of the main points, David, is very rarely have I did this, but sometimes someone would critique a, a, a video work of mine or something. And I said, let me just, let me go see what this guy's portfolio, just for kicks, you know, and just like David said, you go there and it's like, they have like, they don't have anything. I mean, yeah. There's just nothing or yep. it's like really bad, but usually they just don't have anything. So yeah, I don't get why they're doing that. It just hurt people's feelings, I guess. So just be mindful of that. Be, be friendly. If you, if you literally, if you don't like something, whether it's a video or a photo, just keep scrolling. Uh, just keep, just go, just exactly. scroll. If you like it, then comment like, wow, that's a Move really on. nice shot. And if you see some that you know is new and they are improving and they didn't ask for a critique, go in there and say, wow, that's a really good shot. I see you improving. Stuff like that. It just uplifts people. And like David said, go to our Facebook page because we get a lot of that uplifting type stuff and none of the, the, the bad stuff. So, all right, so let's, that's all I wanted to talk let's about, quickly David. go to questions. Um, so far away if you uh, have any. But I, I noticed we were talking about the iPhone earlier and it's interesting because Michael said, uh, the footage looked great, that obviously, that I took. But he said, but I wonder what a wedding customer would think after paying 2 to 5K for a wedding and I bust out my cell phone to film their wedding. Well, I would never do it just on its own, Michael. So yeah. uh, if I am using something like an iPhone, and I have done this before, actually, I will still have my high-end digital SLR with me uh, and I'll be doing both at the same time. So there's no way I would just be using an iPhone. Um, but I suppose in one way they also have hired you for your work. So that, that's another thing. They know the type of work that you produce. But I, I would never just go with just an iPhone. I mean, I'll, I'll still always well, here's have the that thing. with me. <clears throat> that, that was the same kind of questions I got when I got into the Panasonic GH2. Like yeah. this was like, oh my gosh, almost 10 years ago. <laughs> People on my YouTube channel would say that. Like, are you serious? You're going to show up to an event? What are they going to think or whatever? That they didn't think nothing. I went and they liked their stuff because they seen my stuff and it was never a question. Now, an iPhone, yeah, that's a little different than just even a small, like mirrorless camera, like a GH2 or something. But like David said, you would probably mix it up with your, you know, professional cameras, but then on certain shots, get it like that. And in the end, I don't think they would care, especially if you have it on a gimbal. Now it looks a little different as well. So I don't think they would mind uh, and if they know your work. So, you know, if you showed up with only that, yeah, that would be a little weird. I what think. I'd like to do too is, because I've noticed some people have mentioned ND filters. I know small rig. We're talking about video. I know small rig offer a, a, a cage um, oh, that would for be the nice. iPhone. But I, what I'd love someone to produce I should talk to Small Rig about it, actually. But I'd love to say get it. one done and then have an attachment like on my Osmo. I've got one for the uh, the Osmo Action that is in a cage, and then you can stick a, I think it's a 52 millimeter ND over the front. So I'd love mm -hmm. somehow to get a cage built on these that you could put an ND on there, and then you could control your shutter speed, which would be great. Uh, I mean, there must be some way of doing it. I even thought the other day about holding the ND over it. Um, and then just turning the variable ND uh, to get the exposure. And I, I suppose that would be possible as well, Aaron, to control um, your shutter speed. Um, so because at the moment, well, there's, I'm not sure, because of the way this camera is too, I'm not certain whether those little round holes on the lenses, if they're metal, you might get someone could produce something for it because there is around the cameras there, uh, looks like it's a metal ring but i don't know whether you could do the magnetic nd or not i'm not sure well let me let uh, if i can find it i don't know if i can find it anymore just da, while da, you're da, looking da, i'll just read a couple more yeah. of these out uh we are still waiting on dji to release the mic adapter for the action cam there is one out now mark that's just been announced i noticed i could buy that the other day um so there is one now that's announced and i think it has uh, it has the mic adapter plus a USB-C adapter in it as well, so you can charge up while you're using the mic, which looks like it's a, a good system. 
That's kind of um, cool. Lamar says that if 360 millimeter was a lens, that would be me. I'm not, I'm not sure what that meant. Um, Look. Yep, what were you saying? Let me share my screen. All right, I'll go back uh, to you. I did, I did this in 2012, and I, I'm sure other people are bound to come up with this. Let me, where's the desktop? You can see this me here, yep. uh, 2012, quite a while ago. I actually took an OtterBox case, and I, I, this is a tutorial on how to do this, actually. And I basically put some threads on the OtterBox case, and I could screw in filters mm -hmm. and other things. So uh, there was a company that used to make something. I'll go back. I'll get out of there and come back to myself. There was a company that made... Uh, something just like that, and I got the idea from that and just made my own. Uh, they've got to have something today, right, that has that? Well, you think could... so, because it's, I know you can add lenses, but I just haven't seen where you Because those, just mine was filter. just threads, and yeah. I got filters. I think this was for, like, <laughs> lenses back then, but you could easily just put a filter on it. It was, like, standard, I don't know what uh, filter size, size that is. is. Uh, I had some filters here from Sandmark, which I just did a video on their ND filter, filters for... Uh, the black uh, the Osmo pocket and they have like iPhone filters that would fit that uh, perfectly So they got to have something for your camera like that. These no, I read Mark's wrong actually He actually said I'd read I would actually sell my a7r3 for another a9. It's that good uh, So he loves his a9 They're both great cameras if you if you have the um, I, I'm lucky to have the a7 III and the a9 um, Obviously Mark has got an a7r3 and an a9 and he said he'd sell one to get two a9s um, the A9 is still, it's, it's not only that, it's, I haven't got it in here. It's also the extra controls as well are just wonderful on that oh, camera. Oh, yeah. I love I, that, yeah. yeah. Um, I kind of miss stuff like that. Hey, someone's asking you what case do you have on your phone, uh, It's just John. A, that is the, I think it's called, the, I'll tell you because it's in the back here. Go get it. He's going to get that for you, John. Hey, John, do you got that phone already or are you just kind of preparing on um, what to get? So it was this. I just bought it off Amazon. Uh, is it going to focus? How do you like it? Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, so it's Spigen, I think it is. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's S-P-I-G-E-N. It was only about 20 bucks, so it was cheap. I did buy, the funny thing was, I did buy the Apple one, which is $40, um, but I don't like it. Uh, it's, the buttons feel bad on it. and uh, Oh, know, really? I, yeah, I didn't like it. I, I think I prefer that one, which is much uh, it was much cheaper, and it feels a hell of a lot better. So, so that's what that one is. Uh, I didn't ever. I never bought an Apple like case, case product. It was always, it was always an off brand because I never liked them. They were either like not protective enough or something. I don't know. I I was always buying third party uh, cases for my phones. Mark said the the Westcott looks massive. I think I've seen it against the Godox, and they're a pretty similar size, Mark. So I I don't think it's that. Different. Uh, what else? I figure all the brands will start making one trigger to reel them all. Yeah, well, that is a great idea. I mean, I think that's fantastic. Like, the problem with Profoto is you have to buy separate triggers for everything, and they're not cheap. They're about $400 a, a trigger. Oh. Um, and I had to buy one for <laughs> Nikon, expensive. and I've got one for Sony. This is the problem oh, when man. you go down the Profoto line. I'm, I'm replacing a flash tube, um, which blew the other day when I was doing a studio shoot. Um, and How do you I get phone that them replaced? Up. Well, you just take it in, and they're going to replace it for me tomorrow. Actually, I'll get it done. But it's three hundred and twenty dollars. That's just wow. for the flash tube. <laughs> yeah, that's so. Now, well, do you have a place near you? Uh, yeah, it's just in Melbourne. Oh. So yeah, I've got a oh, Profoto cool. shop right uh, in Melbourne, so it's easy to get. That's fixed. convenient. Yeah, I mean that is one thing I love about it. Like I can just anything goes wrong, I can just take my unit. I'll go into there and they'll fix it on the spot. If they can't fix it, that's it'll cool. be sent away and done very, very quickly. So it's that's one good thing about um, Profoto. Now, is that like a pro service or it's just their typical no, service No, it's just their anybody, typical or? service. Yeah, it's just their mm -hmm. typical service. Uh, that's good. What else have we got? Um, Aaron is glitching. Might be a, a, a what? Might be a plug. Wouldn't you? <laughs> now, I saw mean? that. It's I can see like, it occasionally. Uh, glitching in the thing i don't know what it was it may be it's probably just a bandwidth thing i think yeah yeah you are glitching actually it's probably a skype thing yeah it looked good over yeah, here it's, but um well we're yeah, almost done anyway yeah, so we're but... almost done anyway i don't know why it's done that uh just seeing if there's anything else someone said they'd love to have seen a wolf in that background of the shot that i did um oh well. yeah huh 
<laughs> yeah, it's still glitching on you. Um, will Apple be the first to do a global shutter? Who knows? I mean, it's. I'm just. I'm just wondering about where this will go in the next two or three years. Oh my it's gosh. so exciting to think about where they could go. Now, remember, Different you can sensor. do. You can do portrait shots. So when you're using these, you can actually do portraits, uh, and it does blow the background out. It's only a matter of time before that that's put into video as well. So ha saying uh, everything is in focus is going to be irrelevant in a couple of years, probably once the processors get strong enough and fast enough to do that. I think you'll end everything up having portrait clear. mode in video. Um, so it's only a matter of time, that's for sure. Uh, and that's about it, Aaron. So because you are cool. glitching for some reason. I don't know why that started doing it, but you are glitching. So um, if you can, guys, leave any questions down below. I'd love it if you could give us a thumbs up. Um, and obviously, uh, subscribe to Aaron because it'll be live on Aaron's uh, channel for next, next week. week. Yep. Um, so apart from that, everyone. Uh, Thank you guys for stopping by. Remember, head on over to our Facebook page. Uh, go over there and subscribe to that and say hi to us. Let, you, let us know that you uh, stopped over and that you've seen our show. And yeah, give us... Thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it. It's time for me to go and get my coffee. <laughs> this one? Yeah, no, the real, just a, a, co okay, a, co okay. a coffee. I'm saying it in my New York, New York accent, my coffee. Oh, your coffee. Your coffee. Oh, man. I need a coffee. Um, so co apart from that, guys, we'll see you all next week on Aaron's channel. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Thank you. You're watching the number one YouTube uh, live. Did you get that notification about the A7R4? Did you get that? And the A7 no, I did. The A7R3? Oh. Yeah, it's coming out short. Uh, oh, hang on. I meant to press the uh, end. Where are we? I would say we were good together.